The Indiana Pacers had a phenomenal offseason. They brought in Efficiency King and Obama impersonator Malcolm Brogdon. Obviously, he doesn't look like him, but the voices are practically the same. Seriously, look it up. They also managed to bring in an 18 point per game score for cash. Jesus Christ, Phoenix. They also brought in a very undervalued role player in Jeremy Lamb, and they also brought in a solid backup point guard in TJ McConnell. This team, in my opinion, is incredibly slept on. I think this team could be a sneaky threat to the Bucks and the Sixers in the Eastern Conference. And if Oladipo can stay healthy after coming back in January, I expect them to be one of the 10 best teams in the NBA. Let's talk about why. Before we get into this video, if you are subscribed to this channel, you probably noticed that I have recently uploaded two videos of a 2K20 Timberwolves My GM series, and I wanted to quickly promote it. I'm only two episodes into this series, but so far I have been having a lot of fun with it, despite the fact that 2K20 kind of sucks so far. So please go give this series a watch. If you enjoy the rebuilding process of a team, even if you do not like 2K, I think you would enjoy it. With that said, the Indiana Pacers. Even though he's not going to be back till January, I did put Oladipo in the starting lineup. Malcolm Brogdon, Victor Oladipo, TJ Warren, DeMontis Sabonis, and Miles Turner will be the starters, with TJ McConnell, Jeremy Lamb, Justin Holliday, Doug McDermott, or TJ Leaf, and Goga Badatze off of the bench. First of all, that bench is solid. I think TJ McCollum is a pretty damn good backup point guard. He has a lot of finesse as a scorer. He's a good playmaker, hustle guy, and defender. Jeremy Lamb averaged 15 points and 5.5 and rebounds on solid shooting splits last year with the Hornets. Now, I I don't think he will be quite that off of the bench in the 2021 season, but this year with him being the starter till January, he can still get similar averages. And once he has moved to the bench, Jeremy Lamb will become one of the best backup shooting guards in the NBA. Justin Holliday and Doug McDermott are also shooters, that's about it. Holiday had a really up and down season last year, so I don't know how good he really is, but if he can be consistent, they will have a good amount of spacing with him. TJ Leaf, I think, deserves more of an opportunity. He has played nine minutes a game over the last two years. He is a good shooter as a four, also good at putting the ball on the floor and he's a solid athlete. He has some defensive and consistency issues, but with some more minutes, he can be more consistent. And Goga Badatze was the 18th pick in this year's draft. He is a scoring center with an all-right, all-around game. He can shoot, score in the post, he's an okay playmaker for a big man, and he is a solid rebounder and defensive player. Now, the actual talent on this bench is not the craziest in the world, but what's most important is that this bench is full of shooting. TJ McConnell is the only bad shooter on this bench so even if the talent isn't the cream of the crop their spacing will be up there with the best in the league for the starters there is also a lot of spacing there Malcolm Brogdon I take a particular interest with I think his name will be in the most improved player bid I think Brogdon will average 20 points per game this season. Last year in Milwaukee, Malcolm was the fourth scoring option for the Bucks. As the guy getting the fourth most shots, he averaged 15.6 points a game, shooting 50, 40, 90. He also was just getting 28 minutes a game. This year for the Pacers, he will have a bigger role in the offense and will be more important to the Pacers' success than he was to the Milwaukee Bucks' success. And as a result, he will be getting more shots. If Brogdon could get 15 points per game while being in the 50-40-90 club while being 4th in the pecking order, I think it's fair to say that he could put up 20 on average efficiency while being the 1st or 2nd option. If he can average 15 on incredible efficiency, I don't think it's a stretch to say that he can average 20 on good efficiency. On top of that, I expect him to expand on his playmaking. Brogdon was used as a floor spacer as the starting two guard last season, but in his rookie year as a point guard, he was getting four assists a game, and I think he could get closer to five or six as a starting point guard for the Pacers. Some people said that the Pacers overpaid for Brogdon by giving him $20 million a year, 
but I could not disagree more. Even if he was just a 15 point per game scorer on incredible efficiency with good defense, he would be worth 20 million a year. Two years from now, a 20 million dollar contract will be more like a 13 to 15 million dollar contract. When he is putting up 20 and 6, that contract is going to look like a bargain. For Victor Oladipo, all he has to do is stay healthy. Oladipo is one of the 20, maybe even 15 best players in the NBA when he is healthy. He just needs to stay healthy. Next, somehow the Pacers managed to land TJ Warren for cash. They literally gave the Suns money, and they gave them an 18 point per game score. Just ridiculous. Now I understand that Warren is not quite as good as his box score stats would indicate, but giving him away for cash was just so ridiculously absurd to me. I, I can't even really explain how stupid that was. Warren had some issues with playing defense, not getting injured, and he has some ball stopping concerns as well, but he is still a damn good scorer, and most importantly, Importantly, he is a really good shooter. Last season, he shot 43% from three on four attempts a game. So when he is off the ball, he will be able to space the floor and on the ball, he is a solid ISO score. He can create off of the dribble and score in the post. He is also one of the best cutters in the league. Warren is a bucket. That's pretty much it. Here comes the biggest problem and really the only problem that I have with this roster. They are starting DeMontis Sabonis at the four. No, bad idea. Damatis Sabonis is not a power forward, he is a center. He might have been a power forward in the 1990s, but he isn't a power forward in 2019. He isn't a three-point shooter, isn't much of a ball handler. His skill is finishing in the paint, posting up, shooting middies, and rebounding. He is a center. The guy starting at center, Miles Turner, is also a center. Duh. He is a solid three-point shooter, but on just 2.6 attempts per game, he is not a great one. And as one of the best shot blockers in the NBA, he has to be playing the five to protect the paint, even though he could theoretically play the four. These two specifically have also really not worked well together. The one thing that needs to change about this team is their starting four spot. As for what the Pacers should do about that, trade Sabonis or Turner for a three or four. I say three because TJ Ward and can play power forward. Now as for who they pick between Miles and Sabonis, that is a tough question to answer. While Miles is a better floor spacer and defender, Sabonis is a better overall offensive player and he is a much better rebounder. Per 36, Miles Turner averages 17 points, 9 rebounds, and 3.4 blocks. Sabonis averages 20 and 13 with just 0.6 blocks a game. If I had to choose between the two, I would say keep Miles. Miles is a way better defender, and his floor spacing is more important to this team's success than Sabonis' ability to grab a few more rebounds and score in the post. Sabonis is not a bad defender, but he is not an elite one. Miles has defensive player of the year potential. Now as for who they should trade Sabonis for, one of the suggestions that I got in my Jalen Brown video is that Jalen Brown is traded to the Pacers for Sabonis. The Celtics are in desperate need for a good center, and Sabonis is that. And as for the reason that they would trade Jalen Brown, I dedicated a whole video to that, so if you want to hear about that, go watch it. But if you want the short version, basically Jalen Brown in the situation that he is in in Boston is not capable of being worth a max contract, but some team this offseason is going to offer him a max contract, so they would trade Jalen Brown to avoid overpaying for him. Anyways, Brown could give them shooting and defense, and it would make four out of the Pacers' five starters really good defensive players. That is easily the best trade. Another option that I thought of was Marvin Williams and Dwayne Bacon for Sabonis. Bacon is a great 3 and D guy, as is Marvin Williams, but I would obviously much prefer the Jalen Brown deal if I'm the Pacers. Whatever the deal may be, these two have not worked well together at all. Or maybe they proved me wrong, they have been working out together this summer, maybe they figure out the chemistry there. But as of now, I feel like that's going to need changing. And I understand why they're starting Sabonis. They lost Thaddeus Young, so they don't have a starting caliber power forward. But let's assume that there is some version of a 3 and D guy in place of Sabonis. In that case, everyone in the starting lineup would be able to shoot and shoot well. Brogdon shot 43% from three last year. Oladipo, 37%. Many of those off of the dribble. TJ shot 43% from three, and Miles shot 39%. That would also make four of the five Pacers starters really good defensive players, with Miles being elite and Oladipo bordering on elite. Off of the bench, 
Justin Holliday is a 35% three-point shooter on six attempts a game. Jeremy Lamb shot 36% on four attempts in the last two years. Leaf shot 43% in his rookie year. Doug McDermott shot 41% over the last year and shoots 41% for his career. And one of the main reasons Goga Badatse was drafted is because of his ability to stretch the floor as a center. This team has some of the best shooting in the league, one of the best defenses in the league, and three starters who can put up 20 points on any given night. The only thing holding this team back is a lack of star talent and potential injury. A handful of the guys on this team have had injury problems, and their best player has dealt with injury as well. Now, do I think they can beat the Sixers or Bucks? Yes. Do I think they will? I seriously doubt it. I will say one advantage of keeping Sabonis as the starting four would be that he matches up well against the Sixers because of Al Horford being a power forward now. But as of now, the Bucks and Sixers just simply have way too much talent. The Pacers beat them in depth, they definitely beat them in shooting, especially the Sixers, but they do not have a Joel Embiid or a Giannis Antetokounmpo. As much as I like Victor Oladipo, He's not on that level. And overall, I fully expect this team to surprise some people. They might not be the greatest team or have the best record because of Oladipo being out till January, but when he comes back, I would not want to be the team that faces them in the playoffs. That's the end of this video. Please be sure to like and subscribe for more NBA content like this. Go check out that My GM series and cue the outro music.